Welcome back to my channel. I have finally got around to making a new uh, photography video. A couple of weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago now, I bought a new uh, 100 millimeter uh, two times APO macro dreamer something or other blah 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 lens from Laowa. Um, now, I'd never used anything from Lalo before, didn't know what I was getting, had to order it from China, uh, but I bought it because it is an RF mount rather than the old EF mount that I have to use an adapter for. What, what is interesting about this lens, um, it, it has a filter on the top that you must have because as you use the lens, the lens goes in and out of the tunnel. And because that is um, a possible dust magnet, um, you have to put the, the lens cover on. Now, this goes from F2.8 to F22. Um, it is a manual focus. The, the thing about this lens, and I may mention this again later, but the thing about this lens is that the, the RF camera does not recognize there's a lens on here. So um, you, when you would make adjustments in the, in the lens for the aperture, you don't see the results of that in the camera like you would on an ordinary lens. The, the picture doesn't get brighter or darker. It does, however, show you where it gets in focus and out of focus. And, that, and it does that through focus peaking. And I have this set to high focus peaking in red for this camera. Using it indoors on a tripod, which is what I'm going to demonstrate today, uh, is it, it's a really nice, easy to use lens, super sharp. Um, it, and, and from what I've seen in other YouTube videos uh, of people who've bought one of these, it's also super sharp outside handheld but I'm not really that good at handheld. So uh, I will do another video later. I've, I've got uh, a diffuser adapter coming for my the end of the lens so I can put a flash on the lens uh, to get um, a little more brightness to my handheld pictures outside. And I'll make that video later. So uh, without wasting any more of your time, let's look at the setup that I have and maybe take a couple of pictures. set up here at about a 45 degree angle looking down at this quarter. So I have a very, very sharp point of focus here. If I wanted to get all of the quarter in focus, I would have to put them on a plane parallel to one another so that I could get all of this in focus at this close. What I want is I want to lay that quarter down so I just get a brief bit of it at 2.8 and then I want to see how much more of it I can get when I when I close the aperture down completely. Now this is at a one-to-one -one magnif magnification. This lens goes to two-to-one. We'll do that in just a minute. But right now we are looking at this quarter and the reason I like this setup for me, I have this table that is uh, movable up and down. 
which allows me to uh, get things sort of exactly where I want them and not have to do a lot of finagling with my tripod. It also allows me, because I have it set on this uh, foam board, I can move that foam board around to get the quarter exactly where I want it. Now, the difference between this um, lens and my regular 24 to 105 lens is that the way it focuses in the um, viewfinder is different. So on the 24 to 105, I have these hands that come together at the top and they turn green when my box is in focus. This has um, manual focus peaking. So when I get something in focus, it turns red in the lens. It works just fine, except for the fact that it becomes much more difficult to find that focus with my eyesight. Um, and so I have to kind of work with it that way. Um, the other thing is that with this lens, because it doesn't really talk to the camera much, I have to turn the, I have to change the setting in the camera so that it will fire as if the lens doesn't exist because the camera doesn't know it's there. That means that when I change the aperture, I'm not really changing the amount of light the camera's seeing. So if I got out into even some daylight, I might still need a flash to, uh, to brighten things up enough to stop it down to maybe an F11, which would get most of my image in focus. I do have uh, this LED light here that I have put over the quarter and turn the uh, power up quite a bit so that I can get pretty decent light here without having to use a flash. So let's see what this looks like when we take a couple of pictures. All right, so that's at 2.8. So I'm going to adjust now the aperture on up to f22 and I'm not going to change anything else. I just want to see how much more of the quarter will wind up in focus when I narrow that aperture down. Um, and I can already see in the viewfinder more of the quarter is showing up in red. So I should be able to see more of it in focus when I take the picture. So I've changed my settings just a little bit. I've brought the camera down much closer to the quarter to get the uh, two to one aspect of uh, taking this macro picture. And you can see uh, that I'm barely seeing much of the quarter at all at this point. It, the, it, the, it is so close that I'm close enough that the quarter is larger than the screen. So I have it again at 2.8 and you can see that I have the lettering here in focus and I'm going to take that picture. And then without changing anything else, I'm going to change that aperture again to 22 and I can see in the viewfinder that much more of the quarter is in focus or at least much more legible. It looks like this. So the last thing that I'm going to do here is to use a uh, cat fur cover on the microphone that I use on my phone to see what this fur looks like on a two to one magnification. And again, I wanna see the difference between 2.8 and 22. Now, outside, uh, and we may do this in another video, I don't want this one to get too long. Outside, I wouldn't be shooting at F22 probably because it, it, it's generally a softer focus on the outside. Probably wouldn't go any, any down any further than F18. 
Um, and I might, use a def I might use a flash diffuser with that. I have one in the mail now. So when that comes in, I'll be able to go outside and see what that looks like. Uh, but in the meantime, we're gonna set this up and we're gonna see what this looks like uh, as focus. I love doing these videos and I love taking pictures but it's difficult to keep my coffee hot. I really need to get a plate for this thing. Anyway, <clears throat> so I've had this set up and I have, it, I have it set up to focus in at a two to one magnification and I'm setting it up to focus on some of the hairs in here. And I'm gonna take this shot and then I'm also going to, like I did before, wind this down to 22 to see if I get much more of it in focus. And you can tell how long that shutter speed took to get that much, because it's a really dark color, to get that much light into the lens, um, which is why it's gonna be difficult, I think, outside in some respects. But inside, to do macro photography inside, and especially to use this as a macro photography lens for food photography and those kinds of things that I want to do, and to use it outside maybe as a 100 millimeter portrait lens um, at, with a 2.8 aperture, I think this is going to work out just fine. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, again, for $500, it's a fairly inexpensive lens. Um, it only took a couple of weeks to get here directly from China. And I'd uh, love to hear your comments. Until next time, have a cup of coffee. Think of me. We'll talk to you later.